Hello everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Kick It. Now, we're going to do things a little bit differently today, because, well, as you can clearly see by the board, we have to talk about this. Uh, in the last regular episode of Kick It, we talked about KJ Fernay's brand new project, his spiritual sequel to Mega Man Legends, Red Ash. And now, the campaign's over, and it's, well, it failed. Kind of. And I'm going to spend the next 10, maybe 15 minutes talking about why exactly it failed, and what KJ needed to do better, what he can do next time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, let's start off with the first thing we... Okay, is that better? Okay. Alright, so, why Red Ash failed? I think we can all discuss the very first thing, and that of course was... Timing. Timing is everything. Now, unfortunately, in some aspects, timing is a real crapshoot when it comes to Kickstarter campaigns. Now, Red Ash decided to release its campaign around the same time as a certain other campaign called uh, Shen Mu 3 was halfway through its campaign. And this of course was after Blood Stained, which of course happened around the same time as another campaign called, sorry, Yuka. Lately. Now, Shenmue 3 made about 6 million, Bloodstain made about 5 million, and Ukulele made about 2 million. So that's about, what, 13, 14 million dollars combined. Now imagine someone spending, say, a thousand dollars combined on all three of these projects. Actually, you know, don't imagine that, because it's me. Yes, I actually spent a thousand dollars on these campaigns. Not a thousand each, you gotta know. Uh, so that's one thing why Blood, uh, Red Ash's campaign failed. Because by the time it came out, we'd been spending money on all these campaigns. And we were burnt out and over budgeted and everything. Uh, I, and of course, not everyone's like me. Not everyone can spend, you know, willy nilly on campaigns like I do. So, we. So obviously, by the time KJ Nifuni comes out with his brand new project, we're like, oh god, can I even afford that? So that's one reason why it failed. Alright? But, uh, there was another thing that was completely out, I mean, this was out of his control. Alright? But there was one thing that was completely in his control, and that of course was the release of his own game, Mighty Number no. 9. Now I get KG's logic. My number no. 9's development is finished, we think. And of course, Red Ash's team isn't the same team as the Mighty Team, with the exception of KG. So this is, this is how it works in, the, in development, in regular development. Once a game is finished developing, the, the team, you know, scares out and starts a new project. However, this isn't regular development. This is Kickstarter. So obviously you're working with the masses, the public. So obviously, the simple fact is, Mighty Number no. 9 isn't in our hands yet. So that means we're now pitching for a new project when the project that we already spent three million on still isn't in our hands. So, there's that. There of course was the other announcement. When three weeks already passed and it became painfully obvious that Red Ash was not going to meet its funding, 
they announced that they will be working, they, they already got their funding through a Chinese developer called Fuse. Okay, let's ignore for a simple fact that finding a publisher is not something that you can do on a whim. We can establish right now that Concept had been in discussion with publishers for weeks, months even. This Fuse deal, I can guarantee you, was already in negotiations before the campaign. And they only decided to discuss their situation after it had been confirmed. There was no mention of any talk with publishers or distributors or any kind of additional funding. To us, it looked like they needed us to get this game to, work, to live. So, timing. Imagine, if you will, Keiji Ifune came and with Keiji and his team worked on this project until uh, My Number Nine came out. And then, after the game was released, they announced the new Kickstarter project and said, hey, we already have backing via this Chinese company called Fuse. But of course, because you're our loyal fans, we also want your input and we also want your help. With your funds, we can do even more with this game, like release it on consoles. I gotta get to that point. Which brings us to the second issue. I gotta learn to write, Nita. Transparency. KG, you should have made it clear from the beginning that you were looking into publishers. You should have made the Fuse negotiations public from the start. But even more so, when the Fuse project was announced, it was acted like this was some just out of the blue deal. Don't buy that for a second. But what also was that, when, when the Fuse deal was announced, you then confirmed that all the money that raised, if funded, would go towards the stretch goals. Ah oh, yes, the stretch goals. KG and his team announced that Red Ash would make it to consoles via a stretch goals, or actually console, because they actually hadn't decided which console they were going to bring it to. So, when were they, they were going, they were going to announce it either when the stretch goal was reached, which I believe was $1.5 million, or they were just going to announce whatever the hell they did. I believe the console that did get picked was the PS4 with Xbox One uh, closely behind. Now, Concept did in fact release a prototype or an alpha or something else of the game in question. Using Unity, it's buggy as all hell, it's just a bloody hallway. And it didn't really, you know, uh, bring my hopes up. In the end, I actually never pledged to this project. And quite frankly, I'm surprised anyone did. In fact, when the Fuse announcement was made, people actually cancelled their pledges. Because what was the point? The game had already been funded by another company and their money was going to go nowhere. And it was obvious the game wasn't going to get funded. <sighs> so yeah, we have time timing. Another thing that really helps a project is actual progress. The Kickstarter campaign was rife with arrogance from KG and his team. The, I believe the, the pitch video actually ended with uh, KG saying how cute one of the girl characters was. 
<laughs> the the uh, most of the footage was basically just uh, storyboard animation, no real gameplay whatsoever. Now, going back to the project we talked about before, uh, ukulele was basically straightforward, saying, "Hey, we're four rareware employees. We made Magic Kazooie. Remember that? We're gonna make a new game like that. Give us money." And they did. Uh, Bloodstains, uh, Iga, basically said, Hey, I'm the guy who made those Castlevania games you really like. Now, I'm going to make this new game. I already have investors lined up, but I want to have some help from my loyal fans. Give me money. And they did. A lot of money. In fact, I loved the Bloodstain campaign of all the, uh, the stretch goals and the achievements. That was good. That kept that campaign just rolling. And of course, Shenmue 3. I want to make Shenmue 3 give me money. Now the reason why that one worked, I mean, it was kind of arrogant, you know, saying, hey, it's, it's uh, Yu Suzuki, he wants to make Shenmue 3, give him money, all your money. Uh, the reason why that one worked was simple. It's because it had the major uh, backing of Sony and their E3 presentation. I can guarantee you that would have still seen at least three quarters of what I did see if it wasn't for Sony. Like, uh, Yu Suzuki could have just announced it one day. Shenmue through Kickstarter. It would have still gone funded. It would have probably made four or five million dollars. Or actually, now I think about it, if it wasn't for Sony and the uh, controversy of what Sony's involved about, it might have even made more. But the Red Ash Kickstarter campaign has got to be one of the most arrogant disasters I have seen in a long time. And quite frankly, I'm glad I didn't pledge to it. Going back to the... Uh, the transparency. My number nine has been delayed until 2016. Now I could understand that. You know what? You know, they just announced, oh, uh, yeah guys, look, the game's taking a long time. We just want to make sure things are polished and everything. You know, just just announce that. The problem was uh retailers started announcing that it was being delayed until 2016, and my number nine. Uh, team actually said, no, 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 it's, it's not real, okay, the day is still set for September. And then a week later, it was like, um, yeah, about that, uh, yeah, it's, it's delayed. What was keeping you from just saying that in the beginning? Why were people so quick to jump on the notion that this game delay wasn't real? There was no reason behind keeping it a secret. And that pissed me off. Alright, I should be ecstatic for my 99. I should have been ecstatic for Red Ash. And of course, let's talk about the other issue with Red Ash. The animated series. Because of course, this was after I did the episode. But Red Ash was two Kickstarter campaigns. One was for the game, and another one was for a joint anime series. And I didn't even really look into that one because by the time I had actually looked at the Red Ash campaign, I didn't want anything else to do with it. I'm sorry guys, when I, I really shouldn't have said that I was going to back this project in my last episode because quite frankly, looking back on it, this thing was just a disaster from the very beginning. It launched at the wrong time, they weren't clear about what they wanted to do, and quite frankly, it should not have been done for another five months. They should have actually had some proper gameplay down. Here is a proof of concept, not the one we saw, just some more work done, some more polish. Or you know, fuck it, just give KG Legends 3. He can't fuck that up any more than he can fuck this up. But now, Red Ash is coming out, but it's going to be stained by this terrible campaign. 
which breaks my heart because as a Legends fan, I did want to see this work. I... It really does suck that things just fell apart, the concept, with this project. A Mega Man Legends spiritual sequel should have been knocked out of the park. That thing should have been funded within a day. But I kept going onto that Kickstarter page for three weeks, just hoping to see if it got another surge. It never did. And looking back on it, as much as it breaks my heart, it's what it deserved. With Kickstarter campaigns, you need to be, because you're not talking to fans, you're talking to basically investors. All right, you're asking us to give us our money, to give you our money. If I don't know what exactly I'm pledging to, if I don't see actual gameplay, I don't feel confident. I, I should feel confident in Keiji and Afune. But instead, what I got was just arrogance. Which is, not, which is what you're not supposed to have on this site. Alright? So that's pretty much it. Why Red Ash failed. Well, thanks, me. Now, before we go, let's look at a brand new project. And this is something we haven't heard before. A 3D platformer. <sighs> Inspired by Mario, Banjo-Kazooie. Oh, you've already heard this before. Introducing Poe, a new game head by two guys out of LA calling themselves Polykid. The game centers around a boy with a love of exploration, and it's set for PC and Wii U in 2016. They are asking for $80,000 to continue work on the game. At this point, they have three worlds playable on both platforms, and are wanting to build three more, as well as improving other aspects of the game. I'm going to be honest. I can't be the only one feeling a teensy bit drained by the whole 3D platformer, rareware inspired Kickstarters. I mean, we have Ukulele, Hand Time, Freeze Me, Lobo Destroyer, and that's just off the top of my head. Obviously, it's not these guys' fault. I mean, they're just two guys with some friends. The game does look fairly decent. Nothing mind blowing, but at least the game is coming to Wii U with a PS4 stretch goal at 175k. You can get the game for $20 and bear access at 40. However, with 25 days left, they have only made 10,000 of their $80,000 goal. So I wish them good luck. And I'll see you all next time. And sorry this episode went on for too long.